Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna break down and review one of my freelance video projects. This will hopefully be the first of many of these. If you have any specific questions, drop them in the comments down below. I'm not gonna go 1000% in depth just because I'm not trying to talk for an hour about these projects. We're gonna hit pre-production, production, and post-production. And I wanna talk about what I would have done different in these situations now. Like the one we're talking about today, I shot back in January. I feel like I've learned a lot since then. And I feel like it would be valuable for me to cover what I would do different now since I've kind of learned new things and gotten better at my craft. And the final thing I wanna do is give these a numbered ranking, one through 10. 10 being the absolute best thing I've ever made and my favorite thing I've ever made. And one being the absolute worst. With all that said, Let's watch the video and then we'll start breaking it down. What's the secret to winning? How does a small town kid earn a scholarship to one of the nation's most elite programs? How does an undersized redshirt freshman win the starting job in an offense loaded with receivers? How does the same under the radar star help lead his team to their first national championship title in 42 years? How does this newly crowned champ capitalize on all the NIL opportunities that now wait for him? It's not that complicated. Fortunately, there's now an app that works just as hard as he does. Embassy is the app helping athletes land and manage NIL endorsements on social media. To get started, download the app, create your profile, connect your social media, and share your link. Embassy provides the easiest ways for brands to submit business inquiries, pays you instantly, and automatically reports every deal to compliance through the Influencer app. So, what's the secret to winning? Just putting in the work. That's the video, let's jump into pre-production. So this video is for a company called Embassy, they're local to Birmingham, and their goal is to help creators and influencers make money off of their content, basically to get brand deals. So this video in particular is aimed at athletes. A lot of college athletes already have 30, 40, maybe 100,000 followers on Instagram, and Embassy wanted to step in and make sure that they were able to get paid off of it. And I include all of that to say that the important thing for us as production companies or freelancers to know is who's the target audience and what is the goal of this video. So I feel like those are always super important and super helpful to cover early on because then you know exactly what you need to do to accomplish your client's goals. At the very least, if we can give them a minimum viable product, a video that accomplishes their goals that they told us they wanted to accomplish, you're probably gonna get rehired. So target audience, athletes, goal, help them understand what Embassy is and how to use it so that they can make money off of brand deals. So first, let's talk about how I got this client. Like I said, Embassy is a local Birmingham company and basically the client point of contact is friends with one of my close friends who Jordan asked her if she had any recommendations for video and she recommended me. So basically word of mouth and a lot of the stuff we talked about in the last video building your community and building your craft. My community was built up enough to get the initial word of mouth recommendation and then my skills and my work was good enough for the client to the point where they hired me. Okay, with all that covered, let's jump into actually producing this shoot. As you can see here, we're in Milanote. This is what I normally use to do pre-production. This kind of changes from video to video, but I got into this by watching this video from Danny Javertz. So if you want to know more about Milanote, either ask me some questions down below or go check out Danny's video. So you can see within the Milanote, there's kind of a lot going on. There's a lot of meeting notes and we covered little things like not being able to show school affiliations. We talked about the specific pieces of their app they wanted to show and again, the target audience and the goal of this video. And basically what we landed on is they needed some cool fusion of a hype commercial piece that is also an explainer and explains to the target audience what this app does. So we left those meetings both having responsibilities. Jordan's was to finalize the script and then my goal was to go and look and find inspo. So I found some visual inspiration here. We have this video from Danny Javertz, this video from a YouTuber named Tinbu. But yeah, I found a couple of pieces that 
I thought the visual style was really good, kind of in that Under Armour realm of sports commercial. Sent that over to Jordan, he loved it, and in the meantime, he got me the script. Getting your inspo approved by the client really helps, because then you know like the ideas you're having in the world that your brain is working in is already kind of approved by the client, and that you're on the same page. One thing that can be hard is staying on the same page as your client, but it's the most rewarding thing. To know and feel like you and the client are working together on a project instead of you working on one project and the client working on a completely separate thing. If y'all two are together on it, it feels really great and then a lot of stress and questions and revisions and just butting heads is taken out of the picture. So yeah, we got inspo, we got the script, and then I needed to jump in and start storyboarding and shot listing. My goal was to make sure that once we got on set that I had a clear list of shots, a clear storyboard, and a clear story to tell. I went into some of the inspo and found stills that I liked. And you can see that I jumped in here in Milanote. This is pretty cool. You can mark up photos. You can see literally from this to the shot in the video why storyboarding is so important. So we have our talent sitting left of frame and in right of frame is the app itself. I also found a frame for that to kind of find inspo for the graphics and the visual effects. It's so satisfying to look at this that I did weeks before the shoot. Like, oh, I think I'm gonna want a shot like this that's lit like this and feels like this, but also has graphics implemented in it. And then the final frame, we did it. We made the thing that we said we were gonna make. This is also really important because it helps us know what the flow of the edit is gonna feel like. That helps making sure that there's no surprises on the client end once they see the final piece. They're like, oh yeah, this is what Dustin said he was gonna make. But also it helps me as an editor get done shooting and then just edit the piece. In my opinion, storyboards and shot lists should not be shackles. I think that's something you should also communicate to your client. It may not be exactly the same visually. The flow might not be the same. I like a storyboard to be 70 or 80 percent correct as compared to the final product. You know, you always want room to be creative and to flow on the day. Once you start shooting, you're like, oh, this would be dope. This will be dope. I never want to be like, no, I don't want to be a creative DP because it's not in the storyboard. If I'm feeling the flow, you know when you're feeling the flow on the shoot day, I want to go with it. My dog is right here, sorry. Okay, so that's the storyboard. Let's move on to logistics and the day of filming. So this is my shoot day board. Again, this evolves with every project as I understand how to use Milano better for me. Uh, but on this one, we have a gear checklist. Crucial, especially for a shoot like this where we're traveling five or six hours out of the city. So gear checklist that I'm checking over and over the night before. A prop checklist. Uh, we knew we wanted a spray bottle for sweat duffel bag, cleats, all the stuff we needed to let the talent know to bring with them. Uh, call times that I could share with the crew, the client, and the talent. A day of schedule so that, again, just keeping people on the same page. The cast and crew, me being the director and the DP, show being the first AD, the grip, the behind the scenes shooter, the PA, the everything. And then Jordan, I have listed here as the client and the producer. Cast-wise, we have Lad McConkey. We knew we wanted to use an athlete as our talent. And Jordan had a connection over at UGA. So Lad, he played for the Bulldogs last year when they won the national championship. And we shot this like three weeks after they won the national championship, which was pretty dope. Like I said, since Jordan had the connection and was willing to operate in that producer role, he organized scheduling and location with Lad and his mom. And the location we ended up shooting at was North Murray High School, which was the talent's high school. Jumping into the schedule and the call times, we got up at 5.45 a.m. and then we drove four or five hours to get to North Murray High School. And then lastly on this, I included the shot list just so I could quickly open it up and look at the shots I wanted to get in a more of a list format. Not all of these were necessary and you can see that kind of halfway through the day, I stopped having time to check them off. So yeah, that's pre-production. Let's jump into production. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the video itself. So we have our three scenes, right? Our introduction in the weight room, in the locker room, our workout in the locker room, and then our workout out on the football field. And the idea here was to have sort of an arc based on the voiceover. He's prepping and getting ready for his workout, and he's also prepping his profile on the embassy. He's getting the work done, grinding it out, doing the thing that allows him to build his following, and then we end it with him locking in that brand deal at the end of the video based on all the hard work that he's done throughout the video. So there's a little bit of a story arc. It's not that deep, but that's kind of what we were going with. 
So production wise, the biggest challenges I remember were lighting the interior scenes. As far as lighting gear went, we had the Aperture 300D as our main light and then four of these Lumen 8, they're basically RGB tube lights. A couple of modifiers like the light dome, the lantern, and a couple of light stands. So not a ton to work with and also not a ton of time. And we can see from the schedule that we arrived at location at 11 a.m and we wrapped at 4.30 p.m. I mean, 11 a.m. to 4.30, what is that, five and a half hours? A normal full production day is anywhere from eight to 12 hours. We had a half day of production to knock out this entire video, and I had to be helping setting up the lights and also figuring out the shots in my head because we had not done a location scout for this spot. Basically, when we walked into this weight room, I was like, yeah, it's a weight room. We're shooting in here. And me and Cho spent the first what felt like 10 minutes but was probably an hour testing out different lighting scenarios and just kind of locking in frames and compositions that I wanted to shoot. It was really fun but it was definitely like pushing me creatively. All that to say I really like this video but I feel like the interior scenes could have been lit better and I think that comes down one to time, two to knowledge and experience. Especially at this point I wasn't necessarily the best DP when it comes to lighting and understanding different lighting scenarios. We made something and we worked with what we have. So let's look at a couple of shots from that scene and then we'll jump in and talk about any cool specific things. These first two frames are probably the worst defenders of not being lit well enough. You can most likely see and have already noticed there is a lot of noise and a lot of noise reduction going on in these frames. Basically, if we take any still frames, they're pretty mushy and there's a lot of detail getting lost because I didn't light it well enough and didn't give it enough exposure. So I had to pump a decent amount of DaVinci Resolve noise reduction into these frames. I wish that I could have lit it better. And also this is only a few months after I started shooting on the A7S III and I feel like I probably wasn't utilizing uh, it's low light capabilities in the way I should have. Basically, you should always only ever be at one of the two base ISOs, either 640 or 12,800. I probably shot some of these at 6400 ISO, which is really ugly and really messy on this camera. So know your gear, be prepped with it, and that's gonna help you out a lot in the long run. So we get to this shot, which is the one that we hardcore storyboarded out. This one looks good. I like the way that the lighting came out. And that's not surprising because this is one of the ones that I spent the most time lighting. On the back of this bench, we gaff taped one of the tube lights. So it's giving this entire blue cast to the back wall. We have the after 300D just out of frame with the light dome and the grid, giving this big top light. And we also have completely pumped the room full of fog. This is not an expensive $3,000 haze machine, but it's also not like a party city fog machine. It's somewhere in between those two budget realms. But you can tell like there's a significant amount of fog in here, maybe too much. I like it, I'm not mad at it. And then we have one more tube light giving this really nice, just kind of pop of daylight looking light. Uh, to make sure that we're not just falling into this blue over here. I will say if I was to redo this now, I wouldn't go for this thick of a look on the shoot day. Like yeah, maybe I would pump some of these blues and colors into the shot during color grading, but I feel like I just went a little bit overboard with contrast and with color in the lighting. <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad, but I just probably would go for something a little bit more natural looking now. Uh, so we have Lad is changing his profile. I'm just doing a slight digital zoom here because I wanted some movement. So this shot's interesting. As you can see, it was previously just a green screen pulled up on his phone. I'm no VFX master. I do what I can to get graphics done, but it's definitely not my forte. And anything that I would have the budget for, I would hire out someone to do graphics or VFX or whatever. So we have the phone. I got Lad to pull up just a full green screen. And then I did have him interact with the green screen itself. And then I go in and add the actual screen that he's supposed to be interacting with in post. I can't remember exactly why, but there's a reason that we had to do a screen replacement from the get-go. So that kind of wraps up the first scene, uh, the whole like prepping for the workout, prepping his profile. Then we get into the workout scene. We can jump back over and look at the shot list for this. Basically, I just needed him doing a lot of workouts. The idea is that he's in the gym, he's getting after it, he's working hard. I wanted big movements, I wanted sweat beads, all that kind of stuff. 
I had some plans and ideas to make sure that I didn't just shoot at one focal length. Like, make sure you get some wide, some wide over the shoulder, some medium tracking handheld. But most of this is just to make sure that I got a variety of shots. I did not get all of these shots and I didn't need all of these shots. There are two things I wish I would have done differently in this regard. One, organize it and storyboard these out a little bit more so that I could make sure that I was not breaking the 180 degree rule. But basically, you need to stay on the same side of the subject the whole time because if you switch the side of the subject, that you're shooting from it disorients the audience and it confuses your brain on like where you are and what you're seeing and who they're talking to which direction they're looking I'm jumping around this whole time and I feel like it's a little bit too disorienting we're shooting from the right side and immediately the next scene we're shooting from lads left side and then immediately a couple seconds later we're back shooting from lads right side back to his left side still on his left side still on his left side I should have just shot from his left side the entire time we could have just just turn the freaking squat rack around. But you live and you learn. The other thing I would have changed is I would have overcranked my shutter a little bit. There's a lot more motion blur than I would have wanted in here. I knew I wanted to shoot at 24 frames per second to keep it looking natural, but I think I could have either one shot it at 60 and just not slowed it down or continued to shoot at 24 frames per second, but still crank my shutter to like one over 80 or one over 100 just to get a little bit more sharpness, especially with the lower light situations. These shots just get mushy and blurry, but there is a good energy. Like I do like these shots. This one with him doing the medicine ball is probably the biggest offender on the blurriness and the motion blur. Like what the heck is even going on there? Let's jump into the last scene. We're outside and we're filming on the football field. So I have a lot of the same problems with this scene as the previous one. This one's not as egregious. You can tell, I think during the edit, I did end up flipping some of these. I think starting at this shot, I stay on one side of him and I make sure he's going from left to right across the screen the rest of the time. And and this is the part where I actually got show to get out and be the camera op. He brought some cleats and it's at this point that I did throw the camera up on the gimbal but I was standing on the side watching this on a director's monitor so I could watch a director's monitor tell show and lab like hey I think we want to do this that and this next they would execute and I wasn't like directing DPing and sprinting all at the same time. So that was freaking invaluable. And then I really like this shot a lot so we just have Lad and Show sprinting down the sideline, trying to stay parallel with him, and then I added a digital zoom in post. I love this shot. I feel like this shot could definitely be in a Nike commercial. Just the taking the gloves off, the freaking sun flare coming in. And then we have the same composition as our shot earlier, which this I really love because I feel like it finally tells your audience like, oh my gosh, we're slowing down. Here's a safe place to learn what this commercial is about. You've seen this composition before, you're safe, now listen to the voiceover, read the graphics and understand. And then again, we have the graphics really doing some heavy lifting on accomplishing the goal of the video. We covered the hype part with all the workout stuff and the visuals there. So now we've slowed down and we gotta cover the explainer part. Last but not least, hit the logo. I'm pretty sure Jordan designed all the graphics throughout the entire piece. I just implemented them afterwards. Let's talk about post for just a second. Cutting the video wasn't that hard. The part that took the longest for cutting were definitely the workout scenes because we shot a decent amount. And the thing I find when you're editing shots that are supposed to have energy is like, even if it's out of focus, even if it's shaky, that can still add to the video. So it's a lot harder for me to pull selects and cut out crappy footage because even crappy footage can look good and be beneficial in a high energy setting. So where does this video rank for me? One out of 10. I'm going to say, uh, I'll say overall, I would give this video a six and a half out of 10. Let's give it a 6.7 out of 10. <laughs> All right, y'all, that was a long video. I'm hyped to talk to y'all again, like on the other videos. That stuff's so fun to me. So make sure to ask questions down below because I really want to be covering what's important to you. Do you want to know more about how I got the client? Do you want to know more about how much pre-production or what lenses I used or anything like that? Drop it down below and I will answer that. Make sure to hit the like button if this was beneficial to you at all. And y'all just thank you. Like this means a lot to me that you would watch this video. So thank you and I'll see you in the next one.